23 verse 5. And the man of God, that was exactly what he read. The Spirit of God is one. Psalm 23 verse 5. I want to appreciate the name of the Lord for all those probably texted me in the last few weeks that they have been blessed by the words of God that came from this pulpit. My prayer for us all is that we shall not be hearers alone. We shall be doers. I said we shall be doers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 23 verse 5 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my what? Enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thank you very much, brother. Everything making noise in your life. I pray for you today. That will not allow you to perform excellently. God will remove in Jesus' name. It says, Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Spirit of the living God, as I minister by your grace, by the infilling of the Holy Spirit, us today. I pray, Father Almighty, that I shall not speak the enticing words of man's wisdom. I shall speak, Lord Almighty, as you have prepared me for your people in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord Almighty, that not only will they be beneficiaries of this world, the kingdom, will be, not only will we be beneficiaries of this world, the kingdom, Father Almighty, will be a beneficiary in the mighty name of Jesus. That people will see us and they will say, truly, we are serving the living God. That shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. Ancient of days, we glorify you. For in Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Brethren, we have, from the beginning of this year, we have been talking about this great man of God, David. We have been talking about David. We have been talking about a man that God was searching, was looking. And God finally said, I have found in a man who will do all my bidding. On Tuesday, Holy Communion service, the son of David, King Solomon, after finding himself on the throne of his father, he said unto God, I just want to thank you so much for you have honored my father, you have honored his services. But I see myself, I don't think I am worthy to be sitting down here today on this throne. Or you have honored somebody that is my father. A man who by your grace tried to do your will. He was saying that if not for my father, King David, Am I not Solomon be where I am today? Brethren, we now offer the prayer points. Who can remind me of that prayer point? Mercy. Then we now said that what you will do for your lineage to be a beneficiary beneficiary of you positively, God will make you do it. There are some that their lineage will benefit out of their negative works. Is that true? That when they see the child or the children, they will be cursing the dead spirits. Am I saying something? With all sense of humility, I don't want to be political. But for some who used to know some leaders in Africa, the idea means the Samedos. Is that true? The Abachas, the Hitlers, People look at them today and they do what? They look for the best cause. Is that true? But some look at people like Indira Gandhi. They look at Martin Luther King. Is that true? Am I saying something? And they pray for them for what they have done. I don't know what you want to be in your lifetime. I don't know what legacy you are preparing for your children. I don't understand how someone will have the opportunity now and will not want to leave a good legacy for his or her children. Brethren, we are talking about overflowing. When you live a life, not only for yourself, 
but you leave it for children unborn. Is that not an overflowing? It's an overflowing because a lot of us we look at overflowing only to the extent of me alone. Overflowing means that you have been fed. Is that true? And you are full enough, enough to do what? To share. That is what is called an overflow. I want us to look at it very well. When Joel Austin comes to minister, in any where he goes to, he says, look for the nearest church and attend. Is that true? I don't mean, have listened to his ministration. I will not say that. Too. I will say our church is at 1704 Washington Grove Lake. It is when you are fed that you have enough that you say what? Take. But I pray for somebody today, including myself, that this year, in the name above every other name, you have to an overflowing. I took my son yesterday. We went to have dinner. <laughs> no ladies, only boys. And I was, we were talking, we were talking, I was like, which school is calling you now, we are just doing the father something. How many know there are times when you're a pastor, you know, must create time for your children? Or else, before they know it, they'll be out of the house, then you'll be like, wow. So I was telling him, I said, if I have a million dollars now, what do you think I should do with it? As a man thinking in his heart. That's what he's here. But I'm going through some things, so I just needed encouragement. You know the first thing he said? He said, Daddy, that basement, I really want to occupy it. <laughs> but what am, what am I saying to us? Brethren, you have enough that you are able to uh, uh, affect other people. You might be thinking it is not possible. But the Bible says here, thou preparest a table for me. That's what David is saying. A man who was a shepherd, a man that all he knew all his life was to take care of sheep. He said, Who are thou uncircumcised Palestine? That when the tiger, when the lions come, they try to devour the sheep. What I do best is to protect the sheep from you having them as a feast. That's all he knows. But God says what? Although they have called you to be a shepherd boy, you continue to shepherd. Or you shepherd my people. Am I saying something? That you are the kind that I'm looking for. Someone who can protect. You are protected animals. Now you are going to protect human beings. I'm moving you higher. I pray for somebody here today in the name above every other name. He said, in the presence of thine enemies, meaning that they will not die, they will see what the Lord is doing in your life. They will see you from disgrace to the palace. They will see you from nothing to somewhere. They will see you from no children to children. They will see you from no job to jobs. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, as the Lord pleases, he does. He does whatever he pleases. And in your life, the way he did in life of who David, he's going to do it for you. And he's going to do it for me. He said that in the presence of thy enemies, thou anointest my head. With what? With all. And what? And it begins to do what? Brethren, when it begins to run over, it means that it is filled to capacity. This year, in anything that you have lacked, every positive thing that you have lacked, this year, God is filling it up for you in Jesus' name. Our God is such a big God. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The earth, every single thing belongs unto God. And God has authority and power over all these things. And this year, 2004, 4 is 14, is moving it your way in the mighty name of Jesus. He owns the whole earth. And because you are a child of God, you will live to an overflow, you will live to abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Joel, I mean, the book of John 10 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to what? And to destroy. I have come that you have life and that you have it what? More abundantly. 
let me tell you something. No matter how enticing the enemy is, the only thing the enemy does is to destroy. It goes into homes, it goes into churches, it goes into marriages, it goes places, and it brings up, it packages something that looks attractive. The end result of that attractive thing or attraction is ruin. But our God said, I have come that you may have life and have it not only ordinarily, but you have it to an overflowing. I'm, I'm saying to somebody here today, and I'm saying to myself that in the name above every other name, you are having it to an overflow. He said, I have prepared a place for you in the presence of your enemies. Not only will you take juice, you will take the one that, you know, at times we go to the store, we buy any juice. But the one that you want, you will take it in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, in year 2014, the Lord is saying that where you have never been before, I'm going to take you there. Brethren, there is a difference between God taking you there. You are there, is that true? But not only will you be there, you will move others. Am I saying something? You have enough. You know, where we come from, we are so, so kind of naive that when you get to a prominent place, we say to ourselves, I don't want to bring my people there. They will spoil the place. You know what I'm saying? How many know what I'm saying? But by the grace of God, when God helps you, by the grace of God, when God is ready to bless you, he will take you there. You will now be a source to bring others that come and see what the Lord has done. Remember the story of Joseph. Joseph got there. Is that true? Then he brought onto the place. That is what is called what? An overflowing. That is why I was singing this morning. That's why I was dancing this morning. Because I know, I see, I can see the cloud for me. I can see the cloud for me. Brethren, is there anyone who can take all the water that rain can bring? No man. And that is what's going to happen for you exactly. That in the name above every other name, our God that we serve, this year, he's lifting you up. Say, Pastor, he's lifting you up too. He's lifting us up in the mighty name of Jesus. He's lifting us up in grace, in power, in favor, in overflow, to the extent more than you can take in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's have our sins, brethren. The book of Joel 2, 23, 24. It says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter in the first month. And the floors shall be full of what? Wheat and vats shall overflow with wine and oil. He said, he gave unto you moderately the former rain. Is that true? But he's getting ready in the life of someone not only to give you the former, he's going to give you the present. He's going to give you the future. He's going to combine everything together that your wheat will flow to an overflowing. Your oil will run over. That the work of your hand, any single, every single thing that you do will turn to gold. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, it is the Lord that gives us power to make wealth. Oh. Many of us have seen it. Oh, I'm going to America. The land flowing with milk and honey. They say it is LPN, SPN, LPN. <laughs> you finish the LPN. $28. You see that you have to do over time for it to happen. But when the Lord begins to help you, He will take you from Kenya. Is that true? You will become the President of the United States. He will take you from nowhere. He will say, I will qualify you while others are undermining you. He will pick you from nowhere and He will make you the King of Israel. And He's speaking to somebody from Syria alone today. He's speaking to somebody from Ghana, from Congo, from Nigeria. He's taking you to where people have never thought before. He's taking your children, your lineage. He's taking you places. That is what an overflow is. I was saying on Tuesday, I said two generations cannot suffer. It is not possible. 
two generations that they can't suffer. What is suffer? Suffer is when you don't have... Okay, there are levels of suffering. Am I saying something? Many of us did not see that suffering. The general pastor of our church, Pastor E.I. Deboe, will say to us that the poor themselves, the association of poor people, they were calling him and his family what? Poor. You know what I'm talking about. There are levels. Brethren, I'm not sure any one of us have experienced it, but if you have experienced it, this is the moderate that God is giving you because you are going somewhere. This is the moderate that God is giving you because you are going to move places in the mighty name of Jesus. So therefore, brethren, your wit, the work of your hand, every single thing that you do this year, the Lord will bless it in Jesus' name. In this year, there will be rivers of joy, rivers of abundance, of mercy, flowing in your way. If I share a testimony with us, brethren, there's someone that I know that 10 years to a particular time, or 15 years to a particular time, the person was crying day in, day out because it was disgraced. Someone said disgraced. It was not a local disgrace. It was what? A national disgrace. <laughs> that everybody saw him and said, did you see? Hey, they are giving him back home. They sent him back. He said, every day I was crying. When a big... Well, just to please, can you please rise up? With all humility, please. You see how short this man is and how... Can you see them? Somebody as bigger than him is saying that every day all I do is what? Cry. But fast forward 15 years and now become a national... A national... And now become what everybody is talking about. A national celebrity. A national celebrity. Brethren, every of your ashes, every of your crying, when an overflow comes, you might be thinking today that what is happening. You might be thinking that today that I don't understand. It seems God has given up on me. But if you do not look back, if you persevere, you will soon become greater than that person in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's have a six, brethren. When, when people want to do something and they say, go and ask a daughter first. Is that not an overflow? When you are in your family, God is saying that your wits, we don't, we don't always think it's money alone. No, influence, affluence. Am I saying something? When they say they want to do something and they say, have you asked Adora? They, they say in your family that they want to do, they want to paint our father's house. And they are saying that we know that John will not contribute. You haven't heard that. You know what I'm talking about. But when they say, let's count how many will contribute. And they say, forget. And they, and they say, no, uh, we don't have any problem with Mary. It means that Mary has already, one way or the other, been taken care of by God. That is exactly what God wants to do for you this year. That everywhere you get to. I said to my wife and I said to my children, I said, God has blessed us. We live in a house. We are not in a shelter. We have food. We have juice. Is that true? What else do I need? What I'm saying to somebody today, I will have enough. I like something. I like when people come to my house. That is an overflow for me. Am I saying something that I can give out of the much that God has given unto me? To say, take my juice and do what? And do. Take my bread and do what? Take my water and do what? Is that not an overflow? That I have enough to be able to do what? The Lord was telling the man of God to the where your eyes can see, I will give unto you. Am I saying something? I pray for somebody here this year that in the name above every other name, God will take you there. Overflow in grace, God will give unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. What is grace? Grace is an unmerited favor. Grace makes God suspend the rules for your sake. They say you don't qualify, but when God qualifies you, you, became, you become qualified. That how can he be a black man? He has a funny name that people cannot even pronounce very well. 
But by the grace of God, God said, I don't care about that. Whether you like it or not, I'm taking him there. Right there, when God begins to qualify you, God will say that, you know what? Everybody will stand at attention until we bring David here. And they will stand, and you will come, and they will favor you. That is what is happening to somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. And our God is able to do it. That is why this morning I was singing. I was dancing. When you see me in that attitude, brethren, as the pastor of this church, by the grace of God, you should be able to pick and look into the future and say, oh, what is pastor saying? I see great things happening for us. I see success is left, right, and center in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we are doing what? Fulfilling God's purpose. Am I saying something? Fulfilling God's purpose. It will give you overflow in grace. It will give you overflow in healing. Ezekiel 47, 8 says, Then said he unto me, This water waters issue out towards the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which bring forth into the sea the waters that shall be healed. This year, everywhere that you suffer sickness, low sperm count, fibroid, every single one, the Lord is taking care of in Jesus' name. The Lord said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that he does not change. He's, he's no respect of any, any human being. The thing that the husband that the Lord gave to your friend is the best husband. Wait until you see what God is going to do for you. Am I saying something? God is doing it for us. Overflow in prosperity. Overflow in prosperity. In year 2014, the Lord is going to release unto you. He said, I gave to you moderately. Now I'm going to give unto you the moderate and the next one and the next one, precept by precept, I'm going to begin to release unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say unto you, in the book of John 10:10, 10, 10, he said, I have come to give you life and to give it to you what? More abundantly. I'm the one that gives it power to do what? To make wealth. That I'm the one that sees Brother Blay and says, Blay, you know what? I am going to take you where men have never thought you would go before. And the Lord will take us there. That is overflow in prosperity. You will have enough to give unto others. Overflow in provisions. Someone say provisions. Someone say provisions. Brethren, when the Bible says that your bank will overflow, it means that you will have more than enough to give unto others. But then how many of us early in the morning a call comes in on our cell phone and you look at it ah, it's from Africa <clears throat> quickly close it don't kill me <laughs> I was talking to a brother of mine God will help us in Jesus name and he was saying it was so sad two days ago very very sad and I'm like called me and said bro what's up how you doing he was answering me then he said you know what I said what he began to enumerate how many people have called him in the last two weeks. Not for $200. But when he calculated everything, almost like $3,000. And unfortunately for him, he happens to be somebody like me who, who puts other people's body on himself. So the guy became, became what? Sick. I mean, unhappy. I said, my bro, after I have encouraged you, I said, don't kill yourself. I said, what you have, you do what? You give. And, but he said, this is a need. And two months ago, I just gave another. Three months ago, I just gave another. And I said to him, I said, my brother, give what you can give. Once you give what you can give, trust me, the Lord in his infinite presence will return back unto you a hundredfold. He did not even have a problem with the giving. The problem that he had was that he too did not have enough. Am I saying something? And he has the heart to give. But brethren, when God helps you, am I saying something? And you are like Bill Gates. Am I saying something? There is nothing people will ask of you that now you are not able to give. Did I say something? They get an appointment at the World Bank that every problem that they have in third world countries, they are the only one who can solve it. They will give you per annum four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. Am I saying something? How much will they ask you for three thousand that you'll be unhappy with the whole day? God is able to take you there, and God will take you there in Jesus' name. 
the guy had the heart, but trust me, in his heart, he did not have the money. And he became very sad. But then when you are to, to an overflowing, what would matter to you is that how can I bless others? So I pray for you that the provisions God has given unto you this year will be able to extend unto others in Jesus' name. Overflow for new beginnings. This year God is giving us that you start new things. New ideas God will give to you. Ingenuity God will give to you. The tenacity to be focused to completion the Lord will release upon you. You will not turn back because of mere, mere eating your leg on the stone. You will not turn back. Caterpillar has not come before you. A truck has not come before you. You only hit your leg and on the rock on the stone and you say you are turning back. That will not be your portion. The tenacity to move on, God will release upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, the overflow of new beginnings, God will release upon you. Overflow of multiplication, Exodus 1 7 says, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty. This year you shall be fruitful. You will increase abundantly. You will be multiplied. You will not be added. Two plus two is four. But you will move, brethren, in a, multi in a multiplication way. Two times four, two times ten. That shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, even if you walk, you get paid an hour. There's a way God can multiply that. That that money will, will move from 1 plus 1 to 4 times 10 to 4 times 100. And that is what is going to happen to somebody here today in the mighty name of Jesus. After having said that, we said fulfilling God's purpose. For when David has served God's purpose, somebody who wants to live and work in the abundance must be ready to pay the price. Someone say pay the price. Brethren, how many know that it's not easy? From here to California is about six and a half hours. Is that true? Is that true? In the United States. For President Obama to get to where he is today, he paid some price. A lot of us, we want to rule in the affairs of men. A lot of us, we want our names to be known all over the... A lot of us, we want this to happen. But there is a price that you must pay for it. Did I say something? The lady that sang Blessed Assurance, brethren, she would turn day and night, thinking of, blame God for motivation. If something happens to you, God needs you to pay the price even to maintain it. Did I say something? You must believe God that the price that I need to pay to make this happen, God, I need you to give unto me. Let's open the book of Deuteronomy 28. I love that a lot. One thing you must do, number one, is total obedience. Say total obedience. Not half obedience. We have been talking about overflow grace, overflow provision, overflow multiplication, overflow new beginnings, but you must be ready to pay the price. The book of Deuteronomy 28, 1 to says, And it shall come to pass, for if thou shalt hearken what? Diligently 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 that is the key word there if you shall hack it but what we say is Abraham's blessings are mine Abraham's we sing it we have forgotten what Abraham did that Abraham did not exercise 99 percent he exercised what 100 percent 100 percent what obedience so if you are really really sure about this overflow you must be ready to pay the price of obedience. That what does God want for me? What is he asking of me? He's asking of you to fulfill his purpose. He's asking of you that church should not be normal. Church should not be normal, everyday normal. That you should go out believing God, winning souls for the Lord. You should go out serving God as if there is no tomorrow. You should go out diligently obeying what God. He said, after you have done that, he said, watch what I will do for you. Hacking diligently. Joshua 1 8 says, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That, that thou mayest observe according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt have what? Good 
success hacking diligently to the words of the Lord then you will have what good success brethren even if you have success if you don't have what is called the sustainability spirit to keep it on brethren you are not likely to go anywhere brethren I say to you today if you want to live in that overflow it is meant only for those that are hacking diligently it's meant for those that are willing not to do 99%. But God says in your heart that you are willing to do 100%. The Lord said that I will open the windows of heaven upon you. I will release unto you what you need. I will release unto you what you did not even pray for. That I know that you need. I will do what? I will release unto you. If you give God your total obedience. If you are serious about this burden, you will ensure that this year 2014 church will not be normal for you you write it down what does God want me to do it says in Deuteronomy 28 if you hack in diligently Joshua 1 it says it he says if you do all not some he says not only will you have success you have what good success so there is success is that true already you are in America is that true all these challenges that we are having, there is no light, there is traffic, there is all this, they are having success. That is moderate rain. But the bigger rain is coming. When in that moderation of that moderate thing coming, you are serving God. You know, our God, he will test you first, is that true? He will test you. He was testing David. Let me see what he's going to do with all this. But David was doing it very well. Then he released bigger things of me. Many of us have failed at increase of from $20, God took you to $30. You know, I thought that is the end of the world. Oh, right then. Some are making $500 an hour. They are not even going out. They are sitting in their house. If you're hacking diligently, full obedience. Brethren, hard work, number two, hard work and diligence. Proverbs 22, 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Thou seest a man diligent in his in her son, diligent in his son. He shall stand before who? Kings. He shall not stand before what? Mean men. Overflow is not for lazy people. No, it's not for lazy people. Service to the Lord is not for lazy people. So, see thou as a man diligent in his work. Diligent means for somebody to understand what it means to work for God. What it means to take an assignment and sit unto completion. To understand what it means to wake up in the morning, pray, do what God wants you to do that day, and do it unto, you have, I, what is what I want to do today? I've, I've accomplished this task. I've accomplished that task. You are not somebody who looks back. You are not somebody who, when something does not work, you now give up. I have tried everything. It's not working. Right then, there is still something that you can try. A man said, not that I know, not that I'm intelligent, but I keep diligently trying over and over to ensure that something works. I'm a programmer. Brethren, there's hardly anything that you want to program that you cannot program. But you have to stay longer at it. The touch screen technology that we have today that Apple brought to limelight, somebody sometimes was working and accidentally came about that technology left it somewhere, not knowing that in the future years to come that technology will be what everybody will be using. I pray for you today and I pray for myself that in the name above every other name, the ideas that God gives to you, the tenacity, the diligence to work on it, the Lord will release upon you. You will not look back. If you sleep, sleep, sleep on the bed, right then, sleep, sleep on the bed, you watch TV all the time. All the time, you spend quality time watching TV. All the, all the um, movies in Africa, you have it in your closet. I'm not saying it is bad. I'm not saying it is bad. But when you do it to excess, it is not right. Especially the young ones. Get ready. Let God give you ideas. Stay longer at your problem. Don't easily give up. Oh, I have tried it. It's not working. I walk away. After you have prayed, and God says, this is what I want to give unto you. Trust me, if you stay at it, God will bless you there. He will bless you there. He will bless you there. Stay at a problem more. 
after God has said, this is what I want for you. Stay there. We are talking about diligently working. And I pray that this year, your hard work will pay. Especially smart hard work. Smart hard work will pay. In the things of God, let's work diligently. In your own work, work diligently. Don't go have measured things. Number three, self-discipline. Someone say self-discipline. Keep 1 Corinthians 9.27 But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be a cast away. That will not be your portion. You must have self-discipline. Remember we were talking about two weeks ago about control. That you must control your heart to the extent that your heart thinks positively and thinks what you what want to do for God. You don't let other things like mine control your heart because it brings forth negative things. You must move with people that will defy what you, what you represent. Not move with unbelievers that will take you to where you don't want to be. Am I saying something? Oh, he's my friend. Oh, we used to know ourselves. Trust me. If you are not careful, that your friend will lead, will lead you to where you don't want to be. Did I say something? Did I say something? I said to us sometimes, all this book that they say, go and read this um, book of something, book of that. I don't read it all. If it's a sister, no, Mrs. says, Pastor, I don't understand this book. Can you read it and explain to me? I'll say, no. <laughs> give it to Dr. Kemiki or give it to uh, Pastor Olu. Let them read it for me. I don't have an anointing. I don't want to read one book. And be, no, the only book I want to read is what? The Bible. So don't be equally yoked with who? Unbelievers. Don't. In any form or shape. Be equally yoked with unbelievers. You must have self-discipline. You must pray. Somebody say pray. We have been praying every day on the prayer line. Join. Pray. And you'll see what God will do in your life. Don't just keep quiet about your case. The woman of the issue of God said, only, said, only if I can touch the hem of, of his garment. Blind Matthias prayed and cried unto the Lord, have mercy on me. I pray for you today that God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Then think big. Someone said, think big. Think big. Don't think little. Don't think little. At, at times when I hear some people's ideas, I'm like, okay, that's good. Let us pray. Father Lord, I just want to thank you so much. Because I cannot offer my own. It's going to act as if I'm undermining them. But I'll look for a way. Brethren, you must think big. Someone say think big. Don't think that getting what is the only place that this church or your affluence can reach. God can take you to a way that you begin to sing to nations. You begin to teach people about these to nations. Mount Moro is from Bahamas. Is that true? Bahamas, with all sense of humility, I don't mean anything. If you want to describe Bahamas, you will say it is an island. You are likely to say it is a tiny island. That's where I'm going to. But the guy did not allow his location to undermine what God wants to do in his life. I say unto you, brethren, don't allow who you are today or where you are today to undermine where God is taking you to. I was sitting here. Did I told him, put his hands on me? He said, Pastor Ola, I took it. You will see God will take me places. I will affect nations. I'm sent to you to think big. Someone said, think big. Don't say because I'm, well, I don't have papers. People that don't have papers, they are doing exploits. Your paper does not mean God cannot give you an idea. Is that true? Work on the ideas. It is American government that will begging you for papers. Is that true? In Canada, they say if you have five hundred thousand dollars, they will give you papers. So if you have an idea, you have five hundred thousand dollars. Who is begging you to what? They are not begging you. Let the idea come. Let God promote you first. Think big. Think big. Don't just come to you and say, "Oh, I'm earning thirty dollars today." Oh, what is thirty dollars? Think big, and God will take us. Am I saying something today? That's what the overflow is. We went somewhere about three weeks ago or four weeks ago, and one of our members said, Pastor, this is what you always tell church members. I said, I tell church members. That's what I tell them. Instead of you complaining every day, I don't have money, but then there's a way when you, are, you stay longer at a thing, God has a way of helping you out. It might not be easy. Is that true? I have stretched myself all of a sudden. I just stretched myself. But I believe God that by the grace of God, it will turn around good for me in Jesus' name. Brethren, there's a way that you don't even have anything. At the end of the day, something will happen. Is that true? 
something will happen. Think big. We went somewhere, a young lady, very young lady. So you saw what the lady did. Wow. What God did in her life. And I was praying for every member of this church. I said, you begin to pray for every member of this church. I like good things. So think big. Think. Don't just think little and say no. Number five. Is it number five? Six. Get thirsty for God. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they which do, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. You must have a desire to please God and get closer to God. You must have that desire. If you don't have that desire, you cannot live an overflowing. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first what? The kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness. Then every other thing shall be what? But seek first. You must be thirsty for God. When you give all to God like David did, he would ensure that your lineage is established. Am I saying something? He will ensure that no rule comes upon you. The challenges come unto David, yes. But did God help him all too? Yes, God helped him. So I'm saying to you today, brethren, get thirsty for the Lord. In your church, find something to do. Don't become the Sunday, Sunday, 10, 30 thing. No. Look for something to do. You are young, you are old. There is no age that is too little or too small to, or too big to work for God. Find something to do. And you'll see how God will help you. Finally, ask God for big things. Someone say big things. Someone say big things. But Psalm 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me, and I shall give to thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy what? Possession. Brethren, Elisha did not ask for, uh, according to what my master has. He said, give me what? The double portion. The double portion of what Elijah has. Brethren, I pray for you today in the name above every other name that God will help you. You will not ask for mediocrity. You will not ask for little things. At times when I share some ideas, people say, wow, <laughs> pastor, <laughs> they didn't say it out, but they say, what did you drink this morning? But, I'm asking for big things. I won't stay with you and begin to ask for two plus two. No. I would think big. I will move places. Big corporations. I was I read a lot of these things. Samsung. They said Samsung this year has taken over three countries, three continents from Apple. Am I saying something? Well, before it was Apple. But now somebody somewhere is thinking that how can we conquer North America? How can we conquer Europe? How can we? Then you are sitting in Gettysburg. <laughs> you are saying that this person, if I will take grocery up, you know our landlord is not giving me space to pass. You are thinking of this local. Friend, yeah, let's make up. I might say something. Think big. Let God conquer the world for you. Let God take you places, move you places. Think big. But then when you think big, when God blesses you, Maybe you will come after you, after you pay your ten percent. You will come and say, Pastor, take the one that you even if God puts it in your heart today, God will put it in your heart. <laughs> say it as it as it's a legal. Uh, but who owns the, the remaining eighty five percent? It is you. Am I saying something? Think big. Think big. Ask God for big things. There's a story of a, of a guy. He went to he went to a rich man. Some of us know this story, some don't know it. He went to a rich man. And the rich man loves to give children things. Is that true? He loves to give them big things. So this man needed one or two things. So he knows the trick. He said, Let me just go and visit um, Sister Blessing. Mr. Mr. Blessing is the person's name. So he took his small child. Before they left, he said, This girl we are going to, this man will call you. If he asks you for anything, don't ask for little things. Ask for big things. Brethren, if our God owns everything, why are we asking for little? I ask every day that this church will be filled and overflowing. I ask every day that God will bless everybody in this church. Somebody says, Pastor, you don't envy your because my, what I want genuinely from my heart is for everybody to be blessed. That's what matters to me. He said, I want to take you there. This man will ask you for one or two things. So don't ask for little things. Though. 
ask for cars, ask for houses. And this man has a track record of giving it to people. You remember your friend that his father drops him in school at the Methodist verse? Yes, I remember that. You said you like that car? Yes. It was this same Mr. Blessing that gave it unto his father. So you too, as I take you there, you must ask for me. Yes. I might say something. So the guy said, they practice very well. He took the child there. He got there. I said, what do you want? Man said, he wants here. The one who wants something is here. He was saying his heart. And what do you want? Said, I'm okay. Just take this lady. That's what matters to me. Just take my child. I'm going to ask him. So the child said, the man just said, ah, um, son, how are you? How are you doing? Come, come. What do you want? Now took him somewhere. As I was going, the man was like, Father Lord, no one is speaking tongues. This came up for story. Okay? The man was beginning to speak in tongues. So he took the child somewhere. And the man was hearing. So the man said, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Blessing now said, Small boy, how are you? How are you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? <laughs> the guy said, Cookies. <laughs> if it was me and that child, we won't go home that day. It is the mother that will come and get the child. That is what a lot of us do. We ask God for cookies. We ask God for cookies. God, I ask, Lord, Lord Almighty, take me. That's just $25. Just give them to me. $25. When God can give you $250 an hour. Am I saying something? Is it possible? I told one day I was coming to church. And I saw this guy in a Mercedes Benz. Mercedes 2013. S class. The guy was coming. I was coming. So I just, the guy just passed me by. I said, look at him. I don't know what he's doing. My heart. <laughs> and I said to myself, Abba, you don't even know this guy. Why are you envying him? Why not pray that God will help you too? God is able to give me that message. And he's giving to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Who did not say, my mommy? Say, Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Brethren, Ask God for big things, massive things. Imagine me saying, I want a million dollars. If you see the, I've, I've seen the rain in Jesus' name, but I have in my heart that if God can do it in the life of somebody, He can do it in my life. But then bow down your face and bow down your head and begin to pray. That Lord Almighty, overflowing, overflowing, release unto me today. But then pray as if you mean it, overflowing, that the Lord will release upon you in the mighty name of Jesus overflowing the Lord will give unto you. Brethren, ask God for big things, things that he has never done before. Ask him to release upon you. Ask him that the tenacity that you need, the new beginnings. Lift up your voices and pray. When he is able to do it, ask him. He's the God of all flesh. The Bible says, is there anything difficult for him to do? Ask him in faith and he will give to you. Father, we worship you. Thank you for your word today. Indeed, you are God of overflow. And we are tapping into it because this is your promise for us this year. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Oh, your amen is not big enough. Make it a believing amen. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. It's the time for us to pay our tithes unto the Lord. Because he asked to beat. And as part of us entering into the realm of the overflow, we should be obedient in all forms. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand up so that the ushers will help you. And please fill out the form very well so that the account department can apportion your um, tithe very well so that at the end of the year, there will be a smooth transition. Hallelujah. If you are ready, shall we come forward? Please come forward with your tight and begin to bless the Lord for it. 
because indeed is our God that maketh us to have wealth. Ancient of days, we thank you. We worship you because our tithe is connected to a blessing. That there shall be no devourer in our lives in the name of Jesus. And indeed, you will open windows of blessing that will run overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the works of our hands mightily. We give you all the glory. Accept our thanks, O God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Let's package our offering. As we have said, you should not ask God for cookies. Don't give God cookies either. Give God an abundance of offering. Hallelujah. Please make your check payable to Mercy City Chapel. Fill in your form, your envelope very well. And some of us have pledged, we have pledged uh, to the church for some things. We have pledged for um, the mortgage of the church to help with it. So please fulfill your vow and God will help us abundantly in Jesus' name. If you are ready for your offering, please rise. And be a cheerful giver as we wait for the choir to give us a song. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. 